The Mystic in the Theater, Eleonora Dusa, by Eva Lagalian, read by Tiffany Hammonds. Chapter One, Eleonora Dusa. From 1884 to 1924, that name stood for the most potent magic of which the theater is capable. To those who saw her, and thank God, I am old enough to be one of them, that magic still remains undimmed and unsurpassed. It always gives me a shock of surprise when young people and others not so young ask the question, who was she? And many who know her name but never saw her act, eager to know more about her, ask, what was she like? How did she differ from other actors? Why does that name conjure up such vivid memories? It is to try to answer some of these questions that this little book was written. It is a commonplace to say that the art of acting is ephemeral. Unlike other artists, the great actor disappears, leaving no trace except in the hearts and minds of those who were members of his audience. This is especially true of the great actors of the past who lived and worked before motion pictures were brought to their present near perfection. Nowadays, it is possible to preserve, to some extent at least, a record of their achievements, though no mechanical device can ever it seems to me quite take the place of that mysterious communion between player and public, that sense of an experience directly shared, which gives to the living theater its unique appeal. I was no novice when at the age of 24, I first saw Dusa play. I had already reached stardom, which at a time when starlets had yet to be invented, implied a good deal of experience. And I had been fortunate in having spent my childhood in countries where the theater was an integral part of people's lives, where it filled a definite need, where it was regarded not only as a place of entertainment and amusement, but as a source of mental and spiritual well-being. Such an attitude on the part of the public was bound to foster great playwrights and their works in turn fostered great interpreters. I had seen many glorious performances. I had watched with wonder, awe and excitement such artists as Sarah Bernhardt Rejane, Lucien Gautre, Julia Bartet, Alexander Morsi, Forbes Robertson, and Mrs. Fisk, to mention only a few of the giants who lived in those days. Yet somehow, as I grew older, I found myself expecting even more from the theater. I felt there might be heights and depths and mysterious hidden places which these people, marvelous though they were, had never quite succeeded in revealing fully. Like Ibsen's Hildevangel, I wanted all these master builders to do the impossible. My friends accused me of being too demanding to intransient, and I almost found myself agreeing with them. Then suddenly, I saw it happen. This thing that I had always dreamed of, I saw 
until the stage take on an added dimension. I felt the vast audience grow, sit and still as though mesmerized in the presence of a frail, worn woman who with no apparent effort, through the sheer beauty of the truth within her, through the sheer power of her spirit, reached out to each one of us and held us all enthralled. I saw the impossible come true. Of course, not everyone felt this way about Eleonora Dusa. There were some who saw nothing on that stage but an old tired woman with white hair who didn't even take the trouble to hide the ravages of time with suitable makeup. Some were puzzled and slightly resentful of the emotion which, in spite of themselves, affected them so strongly. Others who came to the performance because they had been told it was a cultural must to see this woman who was held as the greatest actress of her day were merely indifferent. But all however unwillingly, found themselves held motionless and silent, as though in the grip of some inexplicable force. Dusa, the artist, was always controversial. And this was also true of Dusa, the woman. Innovators are inevitably controversial. They are pioneers who literally lead the way into unfamiliar places, just as Ibsen, Strindberg, and Chekhov, brushing aside the traditional limitations of theatrical convention, were the first of the modern playwrights. So Dusa was the first of the modern actors. In the years following her death in 1924, several books were written about Dusa. They are, for the most part, out of print. Many of them were written in foreign languages and very few were ever translated into English. With the exception of Luc Nepo's volume of reminiscences sur l'air à toi, which contains a detailed and very personal account of his association with Dusa, to the best of my knowledge, no books have been written about her by an actor. Perhaps since I have spent over 50 years working in the medium through which Dusa expressed her genius, I may be able to give a clearer picture of her acting than those who, no matter how deeply she may have impressed them, had no actual knowledge of her craft. I was fortunate in having the opportunity to study her work closely and even more fortunate in having known her personally. To me, she was not only the greatest actress I have ever seen, but a rare, generous, and most extraordinary human being. If this little book succeeds, even to a small extent, in bringing her closer to those who never saw her, I shall be content. And if as I approach the end of my career, I can pass on to Le Junes, those young workers in whose hands the future of the theater lies, to whom Dusa always looked with such hope, tenderness and faith, even a tiny part of the immense help and inspiration she gave to me, I shall feel profound.